Hello everybody, Alex Lambert here and let's talk about NASCAR in Richmond. We saw a lot of action, we saw a fantastic finish and somewhat of another surprise winner in 2020. Without any further ado, let's get on into it. First off, the main story that we need to talk about is the 48 car of Alex Bowman is your winner in Richmond. He came with a late race surge to pass Denny Hamlin and get his first win of the season for him and his third career win. So he's won in 20. So he's on a three win. Uh, he's on a three year win streak. He's won in, in Chicago. He won his first race in Chicago in 2019. He won his second race of the year uh, last year in Auto Club in 2020, right before he won in California, right before the, uh, the COVID break. And then he won this year uh, in Richmond, Virginia, which is maybe not the track I would have picked Alex Bowman to get his third career win at because he hasn't done very good at the short tracks or the shorter tracks uh, in his career. But he certainly, uh, I was very fast in that 48 car and drove right past Denny Hamlin, like I said, in a late race surge to get his third uh, career win. Uh, you got to feel you got to feel for Denny Hamlin, though. He's coming closer and closer, but we'll talk about him in a minute. But this is an important win for Alex Bowman because those first two wins that he got in Chicago and Auto Club of, you know, a couple years ago uh, were in the 88 car. Uh, this year, and, you know, we all know, you know, Jimmy Johnson retired after the 2020 season. Alex Bowman went into the 48 car at the start of 2020. That's the first win for the 48 car uh, since Jimmy Johnson was racing in it, and it does go to Alex Bowman. Uh, that's also the first win in the 48 car since Dover of 2017, and I remember watching that race. I would not have thought that would have been Jimmy Johnson's last win in 2017 in Dover, and I want to say that was uh, two wins in a row for him. Uh, I would have not thought that would have been the last one, but it certainly was, and we see the 48 car winning three years later or four years later here in, t in 2021. Um, in Richmond. So certainly exciting to see, and I'm really happy for Alex Bowman. You know, an emotional interview for Alex Bowman after losing one of their uh, team members during the offseason. That was obviously very rough on the team, uh, and I don't think we understood as fans how rough that was on the team until we saw Alex uh, uh, Alex Bowman's emotions uh, after winning the Richmond race. Uh, but Alex Bowman said something in his interview to me that was very interesting that I noticed he did not say in 2019 and 2020 when he won those two races. After the Richmond race, he said, let's go out there and win some more races this season. And that shows me that Alex Bowman is confident in his team, and he should be. Think about how fast he was in Richmond. Um, and that he's confident that he can go out there and win plenty more races in this season, uh, which is certainly good for Alex Bowman because I've noticed that it seems like the confidence wasn't there for that team when he was driving the 88 car. Now, after him saying that and after that emotional victory, I definitely think we should watch Alex Bowman, especially after an extremely fast race car. Uh, now, Alex Bowman did not dominate this race in any fashion. He was not fast, really, or he was fast, but he was not up at the front all day at all, and that's because of a pit road penalty. Uh, didn't have the fastest start to the race, got the pit road penalty, went to the back of the pack, uh, but was able to slowly work his way up. And at Richmond, and we've had this conversation before, uh, Kyle Busch is one that always points this out. Uh, Kyle Busch has said, you can't pass at Richmond, you know how he gets. Uh, he said it's really difficult to pass at Richmond, and we know that's true. With this aerodynamic package, it's difficult to pass at Richmond. So Alex Bowman definitely had a lot of speed to be able to come through the field like he did, and that's why it took him so long because of you know the new aero package and how difficult it is to pass at this racetrack. But he was able to get to the front, and on that final restart, he just blew right past Denny Hamlin and got his third career win. A heck of a race for Alex Bowman, certainly uh, excited, exciting finish, exciting finish to see him win that race. Uh, but let's talk about the second place driver, Denny Hamlin. Oh man, it's tough for Denny Hamlin. Another, another second place finish, another top three, another top five, but still uh, no wins for Denny Hamlin. Now Denny Hamlin, they talked about this on Fox Sports yesterday, is dominating the points. He's got an 81 point lead above Martin Truex Jr. That's almost, that might be actually now uh, an entire race. He has an entire race lead. Um, above Martin Truex. So if, if Hamlin wrecks next week and finishes last, uh, he's still going to be leading the points. So he's got a pretty decent points lead after only nine races. Um, and points are going to be pretty important this year, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But Denny Hamlin has finished in the top five every single race in 2021 except Miami, where he finished 11th. That kind of shows you how consistent Denny Hamlin is. Unfortunately for him, he's not getting these wins that he, you know, desperately needs and is you know he's getting closer and closer to winning uh, but certainly Hamlin's going to be a I'd say he's a championship favorite uh you know as we go into the middle of the season and you know to that get closer to the halfway point of the NASCAR season you got to look at Hamlin and say okay he hasn't got that win yet 
He's close. He's really close to getting the wins, but he's extremely consistent. You know, those top fives, those top threes, and those second place finishes, it's a weekly thing for Denny Hamlin. So certainly got to continue to watch him. And I think he's going to, I don't think Hamlin has to worry about getting to victory lane long. I think it's going to be very soon until he wins a race. Another driver that's been very consistent in 2021 is certainly going to be Joey Logano. Um, uh, extremely, extremely talented driver. He's been running up front a lot lately. Joey Logano has. It, noted, it seems like every time I look at the results for the week, Joey Logano's right there in it. He didn't lead a whole lot of laps in Richmond, but he was certainly in the mix. Like it seems, he seems, it seems like he is every week. Um, so obviously, we want to continue to watch him. Your fourth place driver, uh, second year in NASCAR, first year for Joe Gibbs Racing is I. What I think is probably one of your next big stars, and probably going to be a driver that's going to win a few championships in the in the near future. Christopher Bell gets another top five finish on his career, which is fourth at Richmond. And then, of course, you had last week's winner, Martin Tricks Jr., to finish fifth in Richmond. One of the best drivers in 2020 is not having so hot of a season this year. Uh, Harvick did get caught up in a crash with 20 laps to go in this race. Uh, something happened. Something strange happened. Uh, the tire went out, but I would love to see I would love to know what caused that tire to go down because it didn't look like a normal flat tire. It looked like maybe something mechanical was wrong with the race car, which caused something to uh, you know mess up on that um, on that right rear tire. I'm not 100% sure what happened to that. It looked really strange to have a tire go out the way it did, uh, especially on a short run. You know, they, they that wasn't a very long run, a long green flag run or a long run on those tires at all. So very strange to see that tire go out for Kevin Harvick. Uh, he, he did have the tire go down and went and slammed into the wall and his day was done. So another bad race for Kevin Harvick. And that seems to be the trend this season for Kevin Harvick. He's not doing extremely well, especially when you go, you know, from having, you know, what was it, 9, 10 wins last season for Kevin Harvick to not even being able to finish a race or get a top 10 or top 5 this year. Uh, that's certainly a, dra a dramatic change for that number 4 car. And really the whole team, Stuart Haas Racing, is not having uh, uh, the best season this season either. Uh, they, the best finisher this week uh, was Eric Almirola, and he's been running. He's always pretty consistent, but he's not winning races. Um, so certainly want to continue to see Harvick. I think it's starting to get a little bit concerning considering they don't have the speed. You want to talk about another driver that I'm extremely concerned about would certainly be the driver that I watched the most, which is Kyle Busch in the 18 car, finished eighth at Richmond, was fortunately for him able to come back and get a top 10 finish after the pit road penalty with only 57 laps to go, which is pretty significant. Like I said, it's hard to pass at Richmond, uh, but he was able to stay on that lead lap and finish eighth, Kyle Busch did. But the speed... It's just not there. If you go back to 20, from 2015 to 2019, especially especially those four years, Kyle Busch, he was a threat to win every week. He would, if he didn't win the race, he led laps and was running up front in the top three. That was a normal thing for Kyle Busch. Now it seems like he's a 10th place race car and can't really do any better. He finished eighth, but uh, man, I don't know if it had, it might have something to do with this lack of practice. Uh, you know, back then NASCAR had, which I know I say back then like I'm old, but that was you know two years ago. Back then, NASCAR had, you know, two practice sessions a week. You had over two hours at, at most racetracks to fix up a race car. You had qualifying to fix up a race car. Now you don't have that with the COVID protocols in place. And I don't know if that has something to do with it or not, but it's certainly not helping because Kyle Busch uh, is not doing well, at least not doing as good as he did, you know, previously. Only one win last year in 2020, and that came at the end of the season and still looking for his first win. You know, he won the Bush Clash this year, but still looking for his first points win uh, in the 2021 season. I do think he will get that soon, and maybe as we, and, and, and Kyle Busch has had seasons like this. I'm not, I'm not too concerned for Kyle Busch, uh, but it is it is a bit noticeable that the finishes aren't there, especially after the 20, uh, 20 season. But if you, if you notice, if you've watched Kyle Busch for quite some time, like I have, I've noticed, I, I go back to 2017, Kyle Busch went well over half the season uh, until well over the past, well past the halfway point in the 2017 season before he got his first win. He finally got that first win at Pocono. So sometimes it takes Kyle Busch a bit of time to catch up, but I believe Kyle Busch got, you know, five wins in, in 2017. Maybe it was six. Uh, so Kyle Busch certainly, uh, maybe it's just another one of those slumps, which he has had in the past. Uh, Kyle Busch has gone over a year without winning a race, you know, over a span. Uh, He's, he's done that a few times, actually. So certainly interesting to see, and I'll be very interested to see if Kyle Busch, and I really do hope as a Kyle Busch fan uh, that Kyle Busch can get that speed back in the race car. And I'm really not too concerned about it. He's got a new crew chief, which is certainly going to maybe set him back a little bit, but I do think Kyle Busch, uh, maybe closer to the end of the season, or at least I hope to the midpoint of the season, closer to when the playoffs begin, Kyle Busch will pick up speed and start winning a few more races and start being much more consistent than he is. Like I said, he's not bad, 
But 8th, ninth, 10th place and running in that position, you know, week in and week out is really not what Kyle Busch standards are. So that's really, that's really all there is to talk about after a uh, somewhat okay Richmond race. Not a whole lot of action. Had a really good finish. I thought the finish was fantastic. Uh, but not the most action-packed NASCAR race at Richmond uh, that I think we could have had. But that's that's unfortunate. But, you know, certainly, you know, that's how races go sometimes. Uh, certainly looking forward to next week's race in Talladega. That's going to be a big one. Uh, I'm excited for that one. You know it's going to be crazy. We're probably going to have a couple of big accidents, and I'll certainly do a video after that race. I'm very excited for Talladega. And like you guys know, I kind of talk about who, who, who to look for going into the Talladega race. I don't have many names to mention because it's Talladega, but certainly, for one, there's going to be about 40 cars in that race. Any one of those drivers can win the race at Talladega. It's not impossible for those drivers to win. It's certainly very, very possible that one of those 40 drivers, that any of those 40 drivers can get the win, but if you want to, if you want a guy to point to, I'm going to look at the best, what I think is the best super speedway racer right now, which is Denny Hamlin. He does extremely well at Daytona, kind of, or I'm not going to say dominated, but led a bunch of laps in the Daytona 500 this season. One, you know, the last few races at Daytona before that, uh, the the few Daytona five two, uh, two wins in a row at Daytona before that. He's a very good super speedway racer, and he's very good at Talladega. He's won at Talladega before. Uh, if you want, if there's a driver you want to watch and a driver you want to bet on going into Talladega, I think you might want to go with Denny Hamlin. He's extremely good at those super speedways. I guess they're not restrictor plates anymore, but they're super speedway tracks. Uh, so certainly watch him, and I'll definitely watch. I think it's going to be exciting. you got to stay out of the big wrecks if you want to get the win. Hamlin's been able to do that. He's, he seems to be always up front at the end of those super speedway races and in a, in a position to win, which is why I think you want to watch him. But anyway, that's it. That's all there is to talk about. If you're not first, you're last. And of course, let's get rowdy.